Hi, hey, hello. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Autumn Schrock. I'm a travel, astro, and landscape photographer currently based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Today, I'm super excited to briefly walk you through my entire photography process from start to finish. We'll go over a little bit of location scouting and researching, then shooting, calibrating, editing, everything. So let's get started. For location scouting, if I'm not sure where I want to go, I'll pull up Google Earth, but I think I know where I want to go tonight. It's called Lake Blanche. Um, I've only been there once and not this time of year, so I'm not even sure if the trail is passable since we've gotten some late snow here in Utah. I'll use alltrails.com to look up trip reports so that I can get the current trail conditions. No snow up to the lake. Awesome. So it looks like Lake Blanche is a go. I also made sure I know when and what time the sun sets tonight so that I know what time I need to be at my location. Last thing, I checked the weather. Looks like it's supposed to be clear and beautiful tonight. So now it's time to pack my bag, change into my hiking clothes, and hit the road. Lake Blanche is a moderate hike that gets pretty steep. It's about seven miles round trip with close to 3,000 feet of elevation gain. So it's a burner while carrying camera gear. Woo! Made it. Wow, this is beautiful. First things first, I'm gonna take a shot of my Datacolor Spider Checker um, so that I can make sure that my colors are accurate when I get back home to my computer. Right now I have a 24 to 70 millimeter lens on, but it's a little bit tight for this really gorgeous expansive view. So I'm going to put a wider lens on. 14 and 16 millimeters look awesome. I like to shoot really low on lakes so that I get a really nice clean reflection and sometimes you can even see like the rocks and any sort of sediment underneath the water. So come on, let's go. So I'm adjusting my aperture so that it's uh, at about f5 so that my, my lens gets a little sharper. Gosh, that's beautiful. Nature is amazing. Sundial Peak is the draw here, but it's important to look at all of your surroundings. I found a cool shot as the sun was going down as well. And just like that, the light's gone. Time to pack it up and head out. I sorted through all of the images from last night and I am so excited to start editing. But first I want to color calibrate both of my monitors to make sure that they're up to date and the colors that I'm viewing are accurate. I use the Datacolor Spider X for my monitor calibration and it's super quick and easy. I'll show you. I'll choose calibrate my display, then make sure my monitor is ready for calibration. My monitor is a wide LED. Then I'll choose the step-by-step -step assistant. I want a full calibration and I'll leave these settings as recommended. Place your spider on the screen. It helps if you tilt your monitor back a little. Then hit next and it'll run through its calibration. Hit finish. And now I'm going to name my profile as the monitor, month, and year. The screen allows you to see the adjustments made. If I go back and forth, you can see the calibration has made it a little warmer. So now I know that the colors displayed on my monitor are accurate as I edit. And I'll do the same process for my other monitor. Now that I've calibrated both of my monitors, the next step in my color process is taking that photo that I took with the compact spider checker at Lake Blanche and making a preset out of that that I can apply to these images so that the colors are as similar and accurate as possible. Just like the Spider X, the spider checker photo process is quick and easy. I'll open my photo in Adobe Camera Raw, but you can also use Lightroom. First, I'll play with the geometry to get it as straight as possible. Then I'll crop it so just the black edges are visible. Next, I'll grab the white balance eyedropper and select the 20% gray patch to neutralize the warm light. 
Then I'll grab the sampler overlay tool. This allows me to see RGB values in the top left. The whites should average 230, so I'm going to bump the exposure slider to get it there. The black should average 10, and they're at 22, so I'll drag the black slider down. Now export the image as a TIFF file with no compression and hop over into the Spider Checker app. The app has a few different modes depending on which product you're using, so I've selected the Spider Checker Photo mode in the Preferences. Now import the image we just edited by going to File, Open Image. These squares should line up in the middle of the patches as best as possible, so drag the edges in or out until you get it close. Mode can either be saturation or color metric for landscapes. And I'll save to Adobe Camera Raw. I'll name my preset my camera model, lens, and photo for the spider checker that I used. And we're good to go! Restart your editing software and open the image you want to edit. I've made presets now for all of the lenses that I used, so now I can go apply the preset that I just made. You can see, particularly in the sky, how this newer preset is different from some of my other presets. I'll quickly fly through some edits here. I want to warm it up, add some magenta, bring up the shadows, add contrast, and some vibrance saturation. Not a lot needs to be done to this image, honestly. The horizon looks a little crooked, so I'll fix that and crop it in a smidge. I think the sky could be darkened a little, so I'll use the Select and Mask tool. The center shadows could be brightened a little, could use a little more contrast. These trees are being hit by this beautiful golden light, but I really want the greens to pop, so I'll go in and emphasize those. I think I'll add a little vibrance to the center to get those trees popping a little more. The center shaded section still feels a little dark. If I wanted to make the sky more interesting, I could add some clouds, give it a little bit more texture, but I'm gonna keep it as is. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Here's before, still a really beautiful image on its own. And then after. I think darkening the sky really does help make the mountain stand out. And most importantly, don't forget to save. And there you have it. That's my workflow from start to finish. Hopefully this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching. Until next time.